in today's video, I want to take a look at how you can run your C or even C++ code on your smartphone. Right now, I have here my Android phone and uh, the app that you have to install is called CPP Droid. And well, here we are, we can install it. I'm just gonna take you through it step by step. Just accept all that. Now that it's installed, you can simply open it without any issues. And you will notice that it actually starts installing a lot of things. And it is actually installing the GCC and uh, libraries related to it. And also a few examples. And we'll take a look at those in uh, just a bit. And as you notice, the app uh, created a project for us and it's actually in CPP, as you can see up top. And what we want is to actually use C for this purpose. So what I'm going to do is actually close the project. So I'm going to go to settings and here in project, you have the option to close it and you can close it. And uh, if you didn't save something, it's going to, of course, ask you to save it. And now we can go to settings here, project and new. And you'll notice that here it asks you whether you want a C++ or just a C project. And here I'm going to choose C as that's what I usually do, but you can choose C++ if you need to. I'm going to call it, uh, let's call it tutorial, tutorial, and then create C project. It's going to create a simple project. It's going to also create a source file. So tutorial.c was already created for us. And well, we can start using it already. Let's try and create a very, very basic hello world uh, project. And here we are, we have a simple hello world project. And you might notice down below that it tells me what errors or what uh, syntax errors, what warnings might uh, occur in your program so that, for example, my argc and argvic parameters are not used. I usually add them whether or not I use them. But uh, in, this, in this ID, it just tells me if it's uh, used or not, regardless of the function, right? And this is very nice when you have a uh, unused variable, you're going to notice that you don't use it and you can actually delete it. Now, actually to run this, we first have to click, basically we have to click the first save button that's up top, the first button, then the second button, which is to build it. So that's going to actually build, compile just that C file, and then I can run it. And when I run it, it's going to print out on the screen, hello Android, and it's going to tell me that uh, it finished its execution. So it's not waiting for some input from us. I can make it, for example, to take some input from us and sort of print out a, uh, an, a result of an operation with that input. So let's do just that. Let's get a number and then multiply it by five and print it out on the screen. All right, so now that we have a sort of scanf in the program and it should print out uh, this result, if we try to first save it, build it, then launch it. You know, you'll notice that it asks for an input and we can say here, let's say, I don't know, 12 and I hit enter and I get the result is 60. And once I get that, it automatically uh, notifies me that the, f the program has finished its execution. This is very nice, I think. A few other neat things about this IDE is that it supports multi-file projects. So you can actually create a new file, for example, here, call new and say, I don't know, uh, lists.c. Okay, and then you can actually uh, start coding in it and uh, it's going to be compiled together automatically, which is amazing. Uh, one more thing here in the navigator tab, you have a navigator for every single function that you have in the program. If you have like five or 10 functions, that's about what I expect to be the maximum you're going to work on a smartphone with. It's fine. You can actually use the navigator and it is sort of all right to uh, have a bird's eye view of the project. So if I, for example, if I add here a function, just like that, and I save it and then go to the navigator, you'll notice it appears in here with the signature, which is very cool. So this is very useful if you, for example, want to have uh, to call a function, and you, don't, you don't actually know its signature. So you don't have to scroll back and forth. You just go to the navigator and voila, you know how to call it. And one last very nice thing about this ID is that it comes with some tutorials. So some projects, if I go here and go to project and go down here at examples or even tutorials, but let's go at examples and see, and let's say for beginners, 
you'll notice that there are a list of really basic projects that you might want to take a look at and uh, sort of think about how they are done and uh, if you are like out of ideas for your own project you can uh, borrow from that from some of them here so uh, for example i can take a look at the reverse string let's see how it's done and as you can see it uh, reverse string just has a simple function strf and this guy just uh, well, the code is very nice i think the code is very nicely structured we have a uh, first a check and then here we have a simple well not so simple but a more complex for loop with two parameters and it just uh, swaps the characters around using the XOR um, operator. And well, you can take a look at any of these examples in here, projects, example C or even C++, but here for beginners and well, you have quite a few to look at. Now, why did I make this video? Um, I, I think that many of you that are watching uh, actually might not have the, the means to use a PC all the time whenever you're working with C or C++ and you might actually want to code at like one point and uh, for example you have at home a shared PC and uh, your family is actually using it at a time and you cannot actually use it or you don't have one at all or it's something really old and barely even works. Although C does work on that, it's kind of cumbersome and might be your phone might be actually more performant in that uh, sense. That's what I mean. That's why I mean that you can actually use uh, this for simple uh, C programs if you don't have anything else, if you just have your phone. Because this app is nice in the sense that it doesn't take any uh, or doesn't take many resources. It's very light. As you can see, it doesn't even have any ads or anything. Uh, it provides you e with enough help to actually create a very small uh, program, like let's say 200 lines of code in one file. That's probably uh, enough <laughs> that you can do on this um, on this ID. I think if if you're, for example, uh, out and about and uh, sort of an idea comes uh, comes up in your head and you're like, I want to try it to see if that uh, does that. And, and it's something really, really small, like just a simple printf that you want to check or just a scanf or just a conversion from a char pointer to a void pointer or whatnot. You can actually do this in this in this way. And it's, it's very quick, it's a light app and uh, very portable, I think. Now, do I recommend that you start using this ID on a day-to-day -day basis? Of course not. Of course, it is much easier to work on a PC. The uh, keyboard is much more fit for what you need. The screen is much larger so that you don't have to squint at it uh, like I did there. And you might have noticed that I made quite a few uh, syntax mistakes uh, because I just hit the wrong key due to, well, the keys being very small on a on an Android phone. But if that's all you have to actually program and you want to do that, you can use this uh, CPP Droid app. And I think it is one of the best apps out there for Android. So if at home you don't have your own PC or you share it with your family uh, or it's very, very slow or something like that, or even if you're just on the go and you want to try something out real quick, this, this ID is pretty decent, especially since it has those tutorial, those uh, examples or even tutorials. Uh, it tells you, okay, how you can actually do something and you can think about it in uh, on your way home or something like that. It's, it's something pretty nice that it's more of an addition to your normal uh, development environment than an actual uh, complete ID. But if you so, if you so desire, you can actually fully uh, make use of this because it does use standard GCC. It does use uh, everything that your computer used to actually compile C or even C++ code. All right, I hope this was useful to some of you. If you do have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Take care. Bye.